Hi, I wanted to make a brief showcase for the new version of Advanced Normals to Roughness of version 1.5. In this version, I've made a couple of additions and changes to things to improve the workflow and make it to where it's a lot more powerful. So the main thing that I've added now is that uh, you can use your baked normals, either your world space normals or your tangent space normals. You can switch between the two of them here. And they have a separate contribution control. And for each thing, I've also added a gamma control, which is going to allow you to change the influence of the lightest and darkest values that get calculated by it. I've also split up some of these other things into uh, more sensible uh, categories, so it should be a lot easier to navigate through it. So to start off with, uh, I've made kind of a worst case scenario here where the roughness of this is completely black, but I do have some uh, normals that in height that I've created. The normals you can see are very subtle. I'm not even sure if they'll come up on the video, but these are kind of for a rusty surface that I had painted and done through some uh, procedural effects as well. And then I have some height, and the height uh, is uh, making this uh, decal that I have here, and it's also creating some stair-stepping between where I've made some uh, peeling paint um, that sits on top of the rust layer. So yeah, this is my shaded view. And I also want to show how uh, advanced normal roughness isn't just something that happens in a vacuum, it actually gets combined with the uh, texture work that you did. So if I switch to my roughness channel and toggle this on and off, you can see that I don't have any roughness on this uh, height detail here, whereas now I do. And this also automatically works on gloss maps as well. It doesn't just work on roughness maps. So if I were to switch this to a gloss shader and I'd have to reconfigure everything just to show in this, uh, this example here, but if I were to be using a gloss map instead, then it would subtract from the glossiness. Whereas here it's like adding to the roughness. So yeah, there's, there's no setup that you have to do other than just taking the filter and dragging it from your asset library into the layer stack. So yeah, zooming in on this region here, because I think it's a really good showcase, uh, you can see without it on, uh, all of this is just really crunchy, um, and it doesn't come through very well. The way that this all works um, is by analyzing the different uh, frequencies of details that are present in your normal map and your height map, and it generates a very plausible roughness for that surface and how it would scatter the light all of this is based off of a GDC talk that Valve did, where they talked about their uh, working to make sure that surfaces didn't have specular aliasing in VR rendering. And so I'll leave a link in the description for that if you want to check it out, because it's really interesting. And so yeah, at a distance, you can really see that none of this is really scattering light properly with like how it should read uh, if you were up close versus very far away. Everything just becomes too noisy, whereas if I turn this on, it's instantly reading a lot, lot nicer. Uh, I'll switch to my roughness view so I can show some of these different uh, weights and uh, controls in, in more detail. Here uh, is just a UV seam that I have on the model, so it can't really um, figure out things across UV seams. But if you do uh, in change the weights, you can get some control uh, over the frequency of detail and make it to where it's not like affecting things too globally uh, in ways that might uh, create these types of seams. Although when you're looking at it in a, in a shaded view, it's really not too noticeable. Um, and you, you could do some things to like then, then mask this effect out on those areas if you want. So yeah, switching back to just the roughness view here. Uh, if I bring down my baked normal contribution, you can see how um, the curvature of the surface is not getting captured at all in it, uh, whereas if I bring it all the way up, you can see now it is getting captured. You can also see how even though there was just like a curve here, it's finding uh, these larger frequency forms uh, and kind of extending it out into even the middle of this surface here. And you have a, a lot of control over that when you're adjusting all of these settings. So. Yeah, do a lot of playing around with this. Um, the if I, if I bring this all the way down and just do the pixel perfect, you can see how it's just barely capturing uh, these this curvature here. But even still, it is helping some of the aliasing on it. And I can really make that uh, 
really make that uh, strong there. You can even see that if I've brought this all the way down, you can start to see the uh, polygons of the original high poly model peeking through, which is kind of cool. So if I bring up the sharp details then, you can start to see that it's really capturing the roundness of this a lot better, and now you can really see that it's not aliasing as much. And the fine details are going to get even softer, and so on and so forth. So yeah, at this point, I'm really not getting any uh, aliasing on those types of surfaces, but it's, for the most part, preserved how glossy uh, this model looks. It's just helping it to not have those aliasing problems on tight curves or high frequency details that in the real world at a distance would converge to our eyes to make the surface look rougher. So going back, uh, if I adjust the gamma of this, you can see that it's going to really bring out the lighter values. I'll set this to a value of one on the contribution so you can see it a bit better. Whereas if I increase the gamma, it's only going to emphasize the uh, brightest spots that it finds. So you can bring this up really high and you can only get the uh, high frequency details back uh, kind of through that. You can also see here on these small uh, uh, divots in the surface that I made, it's really helping those to read a lot better. Um, and then also on these, uh, these like mounting surfaces that I created, you can see that uh, it's helped the very fine details that I have here not alias so badly like this is really just crunching crunching very very poorly and uh, in the model I had actually made this like a rubber gasket and so now it's reading a lot more plausibly kind of for what I wanted. So now for the uh, normal contribution I'll disable the other things so we can see this a bit better. So the normals, uh, primarily for this model, I had the normals for the rusty surface, and they were very subtle, but they're coming through super strong in this, which I like. Um, and again, you can adjust the gamma of it, you can adjust the contribution of it, so it's only emphasizing the uh, most aggressive forms versus being able to work a bit more globally. Um, and yeah, also the weights play a large role in this. So like, if I had all of these, um, these like macro scale weights uh, disabled and then still adjusted the gamma, then yeah, it wouldn't be kind of flooding the, the model as much, but it would be more uniformly adding roughness into this wherever it did find any variation in the surface. I usually like to leave this around one though, maybe a little under, maybe a little higher and adjust the contribution of things. And then I do like to have usually at least some of the uh, medium to large scale details, although once you get to the large, uh, to the big and huge forms, um, that's going to be pretty much globally impacting the look of it. Another thing is, of course, this can't work across uh, separate materials because it has no knowledge of what, like, I, I do have multiple textures uh, in this, in this uh, model here. I've, I've hidden them all for this, but of course, it can't work across those. It can't work across UDIMs and things like that. So it's it's purely going to be local um, to to the to the UVs and model that you have. Okay, and so now looking at the height contribution, this is where it's going to be finding the stair stepping that I did on this, and it's also going to be finding this logo that I made. So if I uh, toggle this on and off, you can see that the logo is not really crunching so much anymore. It looks a lot nicer. Um, for this, like, I might want to bring up the gamma so it's not uh, doing as much cloudy detail, but I could also bring down these medium scale details. So yeah, if I bring the gamma back down to uh, one with these details uh, mostly disabled, it's looking kind of a lot more plausible. And yeah, before all of these options, uh, there was no gamma and the contributions were just limited to one, so you really couldn't get nearly as much out of this. And um, yeah, if I disable this, you can see how it's really helping this to sit in. I do actually like that this is glossy in this example, but what I might have actually done if I were to remake this model is treat this as if this were a different type of paint that was added on later. And so maybe they used a glossier paint because they wanted it to stand out. And so I would still get some of the nice uh, anti-aliasing that this filter offers. Uh, while still getting some of the uh, gloss bump that, that I do like here.
And yeah, you can also see how it's kind of helping the stair stepping here. So if I turn this on versus off, it's doing a little bit. It's a little hard to see on video, but if I bring all of this up and just show how all of it combined works in tandem, get it to something that feels good, you can really see that it's done a lot to make this model look more presentable, and it's really all just free detail. And this is stuff that it's not uh, just some random hack, it's not just like a, a curvature that's getting added. It is somewhat like curvature, but it's actually doing a more realistic calculation for finding how a surface varies and how that would scatter light to the eye at a distance. The last couple of things uh, that I wanted to talk about is uh, these two settings at the top, which are just adding the generated roughness and renormalizing things. So uh, I'm going to just blow all of this out on purpose. Make this super aggressive. So if I switch to my roughness channel, uh, make this super bright, super, super bright. Um, so yeah, this is all kind of blowing past white. And what renormalize does is it actually finds the brightest value and it's going to uh, renormalize the whole texture. So uh, somewhere in here, there should be like maybe a single white pixel or something like this. Um, but yeah, it's going to renormalize the texture. So it's all in a good range. So you can have all of these details be uh, very strong uh, if you want, if, if like that's how you feel it's working best for, the, for your model and you can renormalize things after the fact, so they're in a zero to one value range. And then the adding the generated roughness, that's kind of just a shortcut for like uh, changing the opacity of the layer. It, it works pretty much like that. So it's just going to blend, uh, blend the effect on and off. And so if I switch to seeing this on my shaded model, switch to roughness channel, you can see that, yeah, it's doing basically just the same thing. And if I were to uh, remove the normalizing with everything cranked up like this, you can see how it's really flattening everything out. Versus now, it's just adding some, some subtle details to it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, play around with all of these new settings. Let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions or anything you would like to see me add to it, please let me know. Uh, this is a free update that you can get over on uh, Itch.io or Ko-fi. And then also, um, although I'm not offering anything on my Gumroad anymore, people who have previously purchased this on Gumroad will also be able to download it for free there.